Hey everybody, it's Marco from Analog Things, and today I have a special guest for the show, and it's Thomas Zomalo. He's a well-known Polaroid photographer based in Sweden. He does a lot on mosaic work, so he stitches a lot of Polaroids together to one big image. He also does some 8x10 work. He was on a business trip in Vienna, and he had some time, so we spontaneously actually recorded a video. We just jump into it right now. And with me is Thomas today, and we already took a really nice mosaic here. That's something we're going to talk about today. Now I think Thomas should introduce himself and tell us a little bit about your work and what you do and where we can actually find your work and look at it or buy it. So my name is uh, Thomas Zamolo. <clears throat> I'm originally French, but I live in Sweden, Stockholm. I've been shooting now Polaroid for almost 15 years and yeah, developing slowly and all that. I've kind of mainly focused my work on mosaic yes mm -hmm. and then i got introduced to 8x10 a little <laughs> bit later and of course <laughs> fell in love with it the format yeah. is just amazing uh, so i would consider now myself like between mosaic that i really like mm -hmm. and still want to push it further and then 8x10 because of this uh, format this format and of course, combination of two that I'm really looking forward to. I started recently, like the last year, two years, I've started. And of course, the film is a pro problem. Problem, yeah. As so, we all know, that's yes. the problem. A big, big Polaroid Originals problem at the moment to produce 8x10 film and give exactly. us material. Because I would need a few boxes to do uh, one, one image. Yeah, I've, I've done a series with, uh, with one box, nine. Mm -hmm that I've exposed in when there was still the uh, Impossible Project okay, yeah. uh, Paris. I've exposed uh, okay. them there, uh, but now I'm, uh, I don't have films anymore. So. Yeah. Who does? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Would you consider doing it on film? I mean, or is it like for you too hard? No, or I've tried because I have, um, I have a half frame. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, is it Olympus? I Olympus, yeah. yeah. Have framed super Pen beautiful F. Pen F, exactly. <laughs> and I've tried a little bit and stuff, and I've, I've, of course, there's a lot of people out there that are doing great, amazing stuff. Yeah. But since, since I've started with Polaroid, and my my heart is still with Polaroid, yeah, or instant film, let's say, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I still want to push with that. I yes, totally understand exactly. you, and like also, yes. I'm like my. Passion is Polaroid material yes. or instant material, instant let's say material, instant material. Yes. and that's where my heart lies. And I, I think that it won't change too fast. But yeah. I'm starting to get to film photography. Yeah. That's why I asked, like, if it's possible. Yeah. And considering the price of an like eight by ten film, doing a mosaic is also like investment. <laughs> it's like I know, I know. <laughs> half months of a salary, let's say, like this yes. for a regular person <laughs> to do one picture. Yes. And then you're not sure if it's perfectly yeah. or not, but. Yeah. But I'm considering if they don't reproduce very quickly, mm -hmm. I still have, a, like I was saying before, I have still have a few boxes of 8 or 9, and, yeah. but it's, I don't think I'm going to use it as more as for mosaics. Yeah, That would just break my heart a little bit to, unless I have really the biggest... Got that still some project, training in there, I guess, or some like idea... Yeah, behind. because of the perspectives and uh, yeah. the lens, I mean, I mean I'm, by now I'm very uh, smooth taking a mosaic with an SX70, of course. Mm -hmm. I've tried a few with um, 195 or 180 or, you know, this, yeah. this uh, film type. But the 8x10, because you have the ground glass, it could actually be quite easy. To frame, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know, it's somehow, I've, I've, of course, I've tried a few. In studio, it's really nice. Yeah. I, there's no problem. But I want to take it outdoor yeah. because that could be really amazing to make some really yeah. big pieces yeah. uh, outdoor. And uh, but that that needs a little bit of try. So I'm, I've been considering to go to just film to train. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. But today I will give you a second a new challenge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're gonna shoot with a camera that you haven't had like actually used at all. No. That's the Mint RF70, which I'm like really happy to have here and to use. And I, I kind of want to get Thomas addicted to this camera <laughs> to buy one, hopefully, uh, to make some work. And we got a few packs of Instax film right here. <laughs> Let's see. A few. <laughs> Let's see if we, we all need them all. Yes. But yes. Thomas is gonna try to do a mosaic with that camera. Yes. And you already had some considerations when you first touched the camera, like before, mm -hmm. about doing a mosaic with it. And like, maybe yes. you can share your, your thoughts of, of it, like what's important for framing and everything. Yes. And like the concept of the... Yes. The, 
mosaic? I mean, like, first of all, I never, I mean, I have the Mint camera, the 670. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't call it like this, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I haven't been shooting with Instax so much, and of course the film is cheaper, also the colors and all that. For mosaics, I think yeah. it would be kind of interesting. Yeah. And then I'm really attracted with a wide, because I think, yeah, of course you can be very creative with the Instax Mini. And then the square, I feel, since I have a 670, yeah, why going over to that? It feels a little bit more, yeah. Exactly. See. Uh, but the wide one, I think that could be a very nice thing. The first, the first thing that I was asking you is, of course, about the viewfinder. Exactly, that's something. Because that is becomes very important. Like, of course, in a mosaic, when you're building it, you're gonna have some mismatch a little bit that creates the charm. Yeah, I think. I guess some people like that. Some people it's really like to at have it. Also, if you look at this pictures, how he like exactly moves around and like but he has a very different i mean style he yeah he's very like different. doing the surrounding style kind of and no but he's also using a different thing yeah he's a macro lens exactly so yeah, he's, he's like, like on this. you touching yeah. really like this yeah. for me i'm away so exactly i have yours. to think about other things than he has to for example yeah i would say it's it's i'm more to the hockney mm -hmm. uh yeah, style, style kind of yeah than than the galiberti yeah because galiberti is like really has these uh he's using a spectro camera for his exactly. images and uh, with the macro stand which is yeah, exactly. something you can get yes. he's just like on you and then there's a lot of overlapping images exactly. but he, he also has like in his mind like the final image yes. it looks interesting this spread up yeah it, it kind of looks like if you see in 3D renderings, the, the you you look them at the the texture packs yes. when you lay it flat, and that's kind yes. of how his images look like. Okay, actually, okay. he does a lot of outdoor. Yeah, that I don't know how he really shoots it. I don't think he has the thing, of course. No. <laughs> like, yeah. But then also he plays with perspectives like this. Exactly. So he builds it very much. He has his assistant. I, I've seen a few videos. not video but, but pictures like, and stuff, yeah. so I've understood his technique. But assistant just taking the picture, and he's really just like going through the film. yeah so it's something much more architectural and all that i think yeah. for me yeah like i said it's more david hockney that i would just well, attach myself exactly. onto like a little bit like that yeah. Yeah. so important thing the viewfinder, the viewfinder needs to be something like accurate and that's yeah, gonna be interesting what it you. shoots is what i want to see yeah but i mean i'm really curious of course about how i'm gonna be able to i mean of course there's the lines so yeah. i'm gonna follow those lines and then if it's not... And you see my images. Aligning works. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the double <laughs> it works. <laughs> yes, definitely. So did the so, lines work? The, the only thing is that yeah. when you're close up, you have the second lines okay. for a close up. You'll but, explain me all that. Yeah. But that's that. After that, I mean, in terms of composition, you work with greed, mm -hmm. of course. I don't have, I don't really have a, it's like, it's not that I'm start always from my top left and then yeah. I just shoot. It's like you would be, a, shooting a single image okay. you first like okay even in the composition i mean you want to use the, the rule of third too you still need to direct the eye of the viewer somewhere for sure yes even though it's much more complex you get so much more information maybe have... too much information that's why you need to direct them to exactly yeah. and then I, what i love with mosaic what i always loved is like the, this thing that of the viewer can go closer further there's this whole thing Different, so you make you yeah. almost choreographing also the i mean i come from, i told you i come from the, the world of dance yes so you're choreographing a bit movements as well mm -hmm. so coming closer to see one frame only and the details of this coming out seeing the whole image so, so that maybe, is something maybe also that I like. something that like I, I love when you talk about digital photography with a mm. zoom lens and a, yes. and a prime lens. Yes. Because people like when you buy like these kits, you always have these zoom lens and you see people just standing there, turning their, their zoom and not moving at all. And I love to use a, a, a prime yes. fixed lens where I have to move and get exactly. somewhere and you change completely perspective and like, exactly. but you're in a completely different kind of photography yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Everybody that uses zooms and like on that amateur level, I say, it, you, you, they are really counterproductive to your creative, creative of uh, creativity of and, and like yeah. to your outcome actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, It really takes a lot out of the, the, the professional photography. And the thing. learning. I mean, I would say I, I, I compose I compose my image the same way as I would compose for mm -hmm. a single image. Then of course after that, there's the greeting. So I, by now I have these grids in my head. So you know which <laughs> the brain has been divided. Exactly. You know which distance you need for, for how many exactly. images. That's something so, you need to kind of learn or 
Yeah, I would say um, depth mm -hmm. is quite important. Like also you can, after a while, I mean, I, I, is this is this manual? Yes, it's manual. Yes, okay. So manual and auto. You're gonna be able to de to to decide if you want to have, of course, your subject probably if if it's a portrait of yeah. you in focus, but then maybe in the back, I want that thing blurry. Mm -hmm. But then eventually, why not another part? If I continue another part, a, a detail that I want to have in focus, yeah. while another thing that's maybe a little bit less important in that frame. So you can start playing a little bit like this. And and uh, that's also interesting. The same as if you would have, but it makes me think about when you start tilting and shifting, it's a yeah. little bit similar also. So there's, there's that greeting, and then of course, like I was saying, I don't start from there. I really start from where it's maybe a bit more of a feeling, you know, yeah. like what's going to be, I mean, it's already hard enough. So where's going to be the easiest to kind of get your guidelines in your head. Like if I, if I start with you, mm -hmm. okay, what's, where do I start here? Where do I start there? Like the corners, what's yeah. here, what's here. So, because I have to change film, of course, at yes. some point, there's either eight pictures you have to or have a how many pictures. Point where you oriented yourself when you. End. Yeah, exactly. So I was yeah. like, okay, this is this is where I can always come back, mm -hmm. and then I start this, and then I just. Yeah, and all, what I also saw was you have really like a stand, which you like your feet don't yes. move at all while yes. you take the image. You have yeah. a really straight body position, so I kind of yes. know like you have the same tripod position exactly. all the time. Exactly. Which this I change sometimes. Mm -hmm. There is the the gliding. If you yeah. like in cinema, you know you yeah. you, you could be having this, mm -hmm. or you have the more the the zero like yeah rotation kind of like rotation like this, mm -hmm. and it, that gives very different uh, results. results yeah. yeah, and also impression or for landscape shift the... like sliding, is, for example, interesting because it gives exactly. a different result. And... It's I would say. With, it's much harder with the landscape because you take much more and then if you mm. so you are mostly gonna be doing this yeah but in studio like especially when I did with the 8x10 yeah then I was really like I was gliding okay. up and down, down yeah taking down the because with tribal it works really good exactly actually. so that's something you have to keep in mind to have the position to keep yourself stable to don't move too much maybe at the beginning and try it out and so yeah you, find find a place where you find good center. and then rotate around you <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then if you go and change the film, remember where you're standing. <laughs> I actually have everything in place that you just like yes. go down. I usually like... open all the packs yeah, because okay. I know how many frames I'm going to want. Open all the packs, put it there so, and okay. and just shoot, throw the pictures. Great. That in mind. And then like when you start out, you start out from the middle or where do you start actually? That's what I was saying before. Yeah. I don't, like I... You, do, you, you just... Let's see. Skip. Okay. Because like... I think it's good to have a starting <laughs> point, but if you start out with like mosaic, yeah. to have a starting point, which you can always orient it. You'd like to, to have the center frame maybe, which you have, and then work your way from that one frame yeah. that you always have the, the same distance. Because if yeah. you start top left and then middle, and that you could you could work it up your image. That's what you kind of plan before. Yeah. Like what I was saying before, like I kind of start with a frame that, that I feel is gonna be a good uh, uh, reference point, mm -hmm. and then, Kind of mood like a bit robotic you yeah. know like <laughs> but would you recommend for a beginner trying out this technique to get yourself started in the middle and then go like in a circle or you know like or get that like row 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 mode for a beginner i would say start in the center yeah or that's what i also was thinking like get a, one yeah. subject and then yeah. start in the center and move your way okay do one right i do one left yes. so start out with exactly. three images to have a panorama exactly and then start out okay then and another up, row and then move yeah. down exactly yes. It also depends how close you are from your subject. Exactly. How, how much do you want to chop your... I'm, subject, now I'm yeah. talking just about uh, portraits, portraits yeah, but people. I mean, but I've, you could also I've chop gone... A flower or something like that. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. But I've gone as close as chopping the face in two, you know, yeah. and then this. And that's also really nice, depending if you want to give more the surrounding of your, of your model or if you want to just have that one thing yeah yeah exactly just just the like the one itself. you took of, of me where i'm like kind of in your environment in my, my yes. environment and like i yes. but i'm like as a person i'm still like not cut in, into pieces like too much yeah, yeah my body but i like, usually I mean, like yeah. as also as a beginner i would say don't cut the face yeah that's a really hard thing to align because <sighs> then yes. it looks weird and yes. you're like maybe 
too, too, too much unless problems. Unless that's your creativity that is bringing you there, like you want to start playing. Yeah, well, we never playing, want to keep anybody in like boundaries. No, Always no, no, no. keep free, but Push like, it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to have at the beginning some guidelines yes, where to start, exactly. and then you can get creative. But yeah. It's always good to master it, or not master it, but to know the technique a little yeah. bit to get creative with exactly. it. Because like if you don't, if you're just going anywhere, you yeah. will never reproduce an image. Yeah. You will just always create something different, yeah. Yeah. and that will kind of frustrate you at some point when you yeah. know you what you want because you already did it once, but you yeah. can't reproduce that. Yeah, exactly. And that's some really frustrating moment. I know that. So I hope uh, I gave our people a nice insight or yes. like idea to start a new creative technique. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah, of course. Of and course. Yeah, we are heading out now, recording yes. the footage that you let's just try saw. A bit. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> that has already been shown, and yes. let's do it. Yeah, Come on. exactly. <laughs> cool. See ya. Bye. <laughs>